Okay, listen. I f***ed up. Yep, I admit it. Uh, the last video that I did, I set out to test the raw power of the new Apple Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip, just to see how many tracks you can get into one mix project before it says no more. Now, I did stumble upon a, a result that I think is far more realistic, but it didn't tell the whole story. But today I will. Why don't you join me? Yep, it's true. Uh, if the intention of my last video was to see how many tracks we can get into one project with the Apple Mac Studio, uh, I made a little bit of a mistake. Now, as I said, the results I think are far more realistic and here's why. Now, the M1 chipset, which is new to Apple over the last year or so, replaced the old Intel architecture. Software developers are, are developing software that runs within an environment and that Intel environment is now older and is not applicable to the new M1 based Apple computer. So what Apple did was is they created an application called Rosetta. They're actually onto version two of Rosetta now. And that basically is a virtual Intel environment. So any software that wasn't coded for M1 specifically, it can still run on the machine, but that's like a virtual environment running within the operating system. So it's not gonna be as efficient as an application that's running natively uh, that was coded for M1. Now this is not a problem because this was architected for that purpose, uh, but you're not gonna get the full efficiency of the M1 Ultra chip if you're running too many things in Rosetta. So I gotta thank a, a lot of you that watched that video that actually pointed that out. And like I said, the results I got, I think were more realistic because if you're migrating today, there's gonna be applications, there's gonna be plugins that have not been made compliant with M1 that will run on the new machine. It's just gonna run within that Rosetta environment. And that's what colored the results of my last test, which means the number of tracks I got wasn't nearly as high as it probably should have been. For many of you that are migrating to the Mac Studio, this may be your first foray into M1. I wanna show you how we can see what applications are native, which ones are running in Rosetta, because it's all done in the background. We don't really know what's happening. And this will give us an idea of really what's affecting the performance of that machine. Now, I have to tell you, it's not just plugins. In doing this video and, and researching this, the different components of this video, I realized there's other things running in the background that definitely affected that test. And we're gonna go through that, I'm gonna show you, and we're gonna redo that test. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna to get to the test in a second, but before I do that, I wanna show you how you can identify what applications are native M1 and which ones are not. Now, imagine you're working here in your, in your mixed project, whatever DAW you're using. Uh, I noticed that I was editing actually in DaVinci Resolve as it was new to me. I'm now officially a DaVinci Resolve guy. But occasionally I was getting like skipping and playback and I was noticing the occasional beach ball. I was like wondering, like, what was that all about? Because I was expecting flawless performance. It didn't occur to me that DaVinci Resolve 17 was not M1 compliant. Now, since they've released uh, 18 beta and it actually is native M1 now. So I, I have noticed some improvements. Now it is beta, there's other issues, but uh, so far it's running pretty good. But you could be here in your project noticing the occasional beach ball and things like that. And you just don't know what's going on. Now, with the test that I did in my last video, well, I was using plugins that weren't M1 compliant. So that affected performance because it required more processing uh, resources that provided by the CPU. So that colored the results and probably limited the number of tracks that I had available. So to determine what is what, we have from the, from the desktop or from the finder, go up to the Go menu, click uh, Utilities, and we're looking for Activity Monitor. And many of you may know this, some of you may not, but uh, good to know anyways. Anyways, there's all kinds of information in this application. All we're really concerned about is the, the CPU section. But what we want to look at here is Kind. And I'm going to sort it here. And we notice we have all these applications that say Intel. Those are applications that are running within Rosetta. Now, I'm going to draw your attention to this one right here. AU Hosting Compatibility Service. That's a plugin within Logic that's not M1 compatible. Now, I know within this current Logic project, I have one plugin that's not M1 compatible, and it's a Waves plugin. And look at this. In, it's sitting in idle here. It's right now at 0.6%. I saw it as high as 1.2%. It kind of fluctuates. But right now it's idle. It's not doing anything. And that's only one plugin. Now, look at these other things that are running here. Uh, Focusrite Control. That's the software that drives my audio interface. Now, I don't need it running all the time, but I use it obviously to administer my audio interface. Now, I'm going to play something here. And let's watch this. Look at this, 
24%, 26% of my CPU. That's eating up a ton of resources in the background that I wasn't even aware of that. I mean, think about my test that I did that hugely affected the results and how much that logic could deliver or the dog could deliver at that point when when something is using a quarter of that CPU's power. That's an app, that's it's kind of terrible and I was really shocked uh, to discover that. Now the things to look at uh, certain things like uh, well Focusrite control server that's I guess related to a driver running in the background. It's not taking up a lot of resources but still it's taking up a percent. Other things to consider, a lot of the plugins that we have have plugin managers, and sometimes they run at startup, and you'll see them up in your menu bar at the top. PA Installation Manager. Now, Plugin Alliance are N1 compatible, but their install manager is not, apparently. And even just sitting here doing nothing, it's chewing up 3% of the CPU. Wave Central, surprise, surprise, sitting up here, using almost 5% of resources. It's just sitting in the background. It's not actually doing anything. Okay, it goes up and down. But if you got all these things running on startup, these are not M1 compliant, they're taking up valuable resources. So you'll probably want to turn those off. But check this out, Avid. If you're using Pro Tools, I was using Avid Media Composer. Avid Link is the their install application. You can also do some admin functions and purchase things or whatever through it. Anyways, look at this, Avid Link. I just got it on in the background here. Uh, it's fluctuating 6%. But look at these other little processes here. I wasn't sure what they were. If you click on them, you can go Command I. It gives you a little more information. The parent process is Avid Link. So it's running all these little applications here. Some of them are not taking much at all. Some are taking a little bit. Uh, Avid Link seems to be fluctuating up and down, but there's easily, you know, eight or 9% of the CPU being chewed up just from Avid Link. Now this can add up and this most definitely will affect performance on your machine if you've got too many of these things running. But if you add all of this up, I mean, there's easily 15, 20% of the CPU being tied up by things that we don't need. So use your activity monitor to see what's running in the background and just kill whatever doesn't need to be there because it's using valuable resources. All right, so let's get into that test. We're gonna kill all of these things. So we're gonna have minimal influence by Rosetta and let's see what this Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip can do. When I was editing the last uh, test video, it occurred to me that not once did I appear in the video at the same time as the Mac Studio. And someone actually questioned if I actually own a Mac Studio. In fact, Stanislav Shimunov, uh, noted in the comments, it said, the next time I do this, make sure I prove I actually have the computer. Well, it is here. Uh, I have this utility room. It's on the other side of the wall from my main studio. So I've got a hole in the wall and I feed all the cables here. So this unsightly mess is not seen in the main studio and I don't have to hear it, even though this Mac studio is pretty quiet. By the way, I almost killed myself getting in here for this shot and I don't know how I'm gonna get out. If you don't see me in about a week, make sure to uh, call the authorities. But here is the Mac Studio. Uh, it's the 48 core M1 Ultra version, 64 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte SSD. I'm using an external drive as the media drive. This is a LaCie going in via USB-C into one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports. Um, what else? Uh, the project is at 48K. Uh, buffer size is set to 1024. Uh, I've recorded some bass, uh, some guitars, and my virtual instruments are covered off by some drums. And uh, what else? Well, I'm sure I missed something, and if I do, you'll let me know. All right, let's get to the test. First, my virtual instruments are covered off by drums. I've got a built-in logic kit in yellow and a MIDI track in green being fed into TuneTrack's Easy Drummer 3. On both tracks, I've got an EQ and compression, and I've got an additional channel strip plugin on the Easy Drummer track. Both are being fed into the same bus with a reverb. I started by stacking 20 tracks of each. With a total of 45 tracks, the session is playing effortlessly with the CPU running at about 25%. Next up was the bass track, which has a channel EQ, bass amp plugin, and a compressor. I copied about 20 tracks. Well, at 68 tracks, the Mac Studio has barely broke a sweat. Next up was the clean guitar, which has a channel strip plugin, a channel EQ, and it's bus to another reverb. Again, I stacked 20 of these. Next are the heavy guitars, which were double tracked. Both of these guitars have a channel EQ and a channel strip, and both are bussed to the guitar reverb bus. I added about 20 of each, which brought the project to 137 tracks, 
just under the tally of the last test and it continues to play effortlessly with one chord creeping up over 50%. This looked like it was uh, too easy, so I had to step up my stacking game. I needed more virtual instruments, so I piled on more drums from both the Logic Drummer and Easy Drummer. At 150 tracks, the project was still playing easily, and that one core seemed to calm down. So I added more bass tracks and guitar tracks to bring the project up to 200 tracks, and it still continued to play easily, with the load of the core starting to creep up a bit. So I added a bit of everything, and at 300 tracks, still playing and it continued to play at 350 tracks, 400 tracks, and 500 tracks. So I added another 50 tracks, and at 550 tracks, the project is still playing, but it seems to have finally hit its limit. Yep, it took 550 tracks to choke the Mac Studio this time. So 550 tracks. You know, you can shave a few off of there if you want to, because that's where we crapped out. I actually crashed the project. I couldn't even open it again. But uh, listen, on my last test, uh, where I did have non m one compliant things running in the background, I capped out at 140. So running natively uh, in M1, uh, we're looking at 500, 500 plus tracks, we want to say. We've got 103 stereo virtual instrument tracks, 447 mono audio tracks. We've got plugins. Uh, we're busing everything to reverbs. Uh, even on the master bus, I've got a master bus compressor. I've got an EQ and a mastering plugin. So all in, we're well over 500 tracks. Now, I'm sure someone's going to complain about this, but this is pretty reminiscent of what I put into my projects, give or take. If you record at 44.1 or 96, you can do some kind of math. But really, from 140 to 550, you can see the difference it makes if you're writing too many non-M1 compliant applications in the background. Around, it really does put a drag on the CPU. So if you do need full power, you're going to be one aware of that. But for most of us here, honestly, I generally don't need more than 50 or 60 tracks in a project. And that's a big project for me. So if I am running plugins that are non M1 compliant, it's really not going to make a difference because I'm never going to need 500 tracks. But it does give you an idea of the resources you have here in the Mac Studio, especially in the M1 Ultra. Uh, the M1 Max uh, reports are it's doing good on its own as well. So uh, like I said, if you don't need 500 tracks, I think even the M1 Max uh, version will suit you just fine. But uh, if you disagree with anything I've done here or you have any thoughts, comments, that's what the comment section is for. Uh, if you did like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Uh, if you want to do a deeper dive with me, I'm on Patreon. I have affiliate links. Hey, we have even got merch now. All that information is in the description. It all helps the channel. I really appreciate that. But the most important thing is to check out another video. I've got one waiting for you right here. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video.